Hey everyone, Mauricio here. In this sneak peek video for episode 16, we'll be giving you a short overview of the changes this week at Starbase, Texas. These images were taken from the flyover conducted yesterday on Thursday, September 7th, so stay tuned for additional angles, renders, and more in our full length video coming out on Monday, as well as our Starbase weekly show on Saturday. Starting off at Massey's, to the very south side of the site, a dirt berm has appeared on the burst pad. This means SpaceX is preparing to perform some testing around here. The strange thing is that S26.1 used to be on a stand last week, but right now we can see that they lifted it down onto the concrete. We don't know why, but we'll keep an eye on it. Now moving on to the can crusher area. The first thing that you will notice is that the hot staging test article was lifted off from the stand, which tells us that the testing is over with this article. With the next test of the hot staging ring happening on IFT2. Let's move on to Sanchez. At the west end of Sanchez, work on the new stand continues, with the first white stand now at the build site. Crews have focused their attention on the second stand by completing the primary ring structure. What could be more support legs for mounting of the next stand can also be seen over on the left. These combined with the five legs nearby should be for mounting the stand currently under construction. What do the white stands look like when installed? We'll find out over at the build site. The stands at the bottom are looking closer to completion, with fresh black paint being applied to the stand on the left and the completion of the ring connections on the stand to the right. Up in the rocket garden, it appears a few vehicles have managed to escape since our last flyover. We're down to just one ship, SN20, out of the three that were previously located in this image. Ship 25 and 26 have since been relocated to the launch site in preparation for launch and static fire testing, respectively. So what's new at the build site? The former home of tents 1 and 2 is quickly being transformed in preparation for what we anticipate to be the Star Factory expansion. Crews are hard at work breaking up the old concrete to prepare for foundation work to support the expansion. Speaking of the Star Factory expansion, we can see that the connections of the two roof sections of the existing building as well as the new one is now mostly complete. Cutouts can also be seen in the roof for HVAC installation, which has already begun. More roofing panels continue to be installed on the second section of the expansion, and more main support beams continue to rise in the area closer to Highway 4. I was able to capture an amazing image from the east detailing the installation of the white stand that was transported over here last week inside the Mega Bay. We can see the screen safety doors that were spotted over in Sanchez mounted around the base of the stand, as well as what could be an inner platform that raises and lowers. On the left hand side of the entrance to the bay, we can also see what appears to be a new beam installed just inside the doorway. What could this be for? Switching to an alternate angle, we can see the same type of beam mounted on the opposite side. Could this be the beginning of a door installation for Mega Bay? Our days of spying on boosters may be numbered if so. Moving on to the launch site. Starting off at the suborbital test site, the perimeter fence gained more concrete. It is now roughly 4 meters or 13 feet tall and almost complete. Next, we'll take a look at the Deluge tank farm where we noticed that the pipe connecting the large water tanks was taken apart and removed ahead of the arrival of the new three-way manifold. Moving to the left, concrete work is well underway on the new slab. We can also see the four concrete trucks were waiting to offload here. Now let's take a look at the orbital launch pad. The most noticeable change here is that Ship 25 is now stacked on top of Booster 9. Rollout occurred during the overnight hours between September 4th and the 5th with stacking taking place in the afternoon of the 5th. Look at this time lapse captured by RGV Cam. This is the first full stack since the IFT 1 launch on April 20th. It's incredible how fast SpaceX worked to reach this point again. Lastly, during our flyover, Ship 26 was rolled out to the pad ahead of its spin prime and static fire campaign. Could this be that this ship will be paired with Booster 10 for IFT 3? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Finally, we received an interesting update this morning from the FAA where they confirmed they have closed the SpaceX Super Heavy mishap investigation. The final report identified the multiple causes of the loss of control and failure of Booster 7 and Ship 24, as well as identifying 63 so-called corrective actions. All 63 actions are not listed in the FAA document, but we do know that SpaceX has made progress on some of them, including FTS testing, engine bay fire prevention, and launch pad deluge system. Based on this news, when do you expect Starship to launch? Let me know in the comment section down below. And that's it for our brief preview of the changes at Starbase this week. 
consider supporting us on Patreon to gain access to premium flyover pictures. This support helps pay for the expenses associated with the flights. Stay tuned for the full 20 minute full analysis video coming out on Sunday. Thanks for watching and be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed our content. And also subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on seeing more videos like this. That's all for now.